Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called Finance Current Affairs. In this very series, we will be picking up some important financial topics and we will be discussing them with the help of different questions. So before moving on to question number one, if you are there for the very first time, you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon so that whenever a new video comes up, you can be notified about the same. You can also join our telegram group. In this very group, we will be sharing the free PDFs of these sessions. So if you want the access to those free PDFs, you can join this very group. Moving on to question number one now. Identify the statements correctly related to AEPS Fraud Liability Guidelines. So before answering this question, let's first discuss what is this AEPS and what these guidelines are all about. Then we'll come back and answer this. All right. So if I talk about the AEPS Fraud Liability Guidelines, then the NPCI, that is the National Payments Corporation of India, has introduced these guidelines. And for whom are these guidelines? These guidelines are for the banks to redress the frauds on customers and merchants where a misuse or an error in biometric data on Aadhaar enabled payment systems have led to loss of funds. So AEPS stands for Aadhaar enabled payment system. So using this system, there are certain payments which are processed, the certain money which is being sent and received. So it makes use of Aadhaar based authentication, biometric data. But what was happening was that this data was getting misused and the funds which were to be transferred under this were siphoned elsewhere. So because of all these kinds of frauds, some uh, guidelines were needed to improve so that these frauds can be handled. And in case any uh, misuse of the data is happening, then the customers can be compensated for the same. That's why NPCI has come up with these guidelines. So let's first discuss briefly what is this APS. As the name suggests, it's an Aadhaar enabled payment system. So Aadhaar based authentication is done and then you can carry out different activities using your Aadhaar enabled account where you can transfer the amount, deposit cash, withdraw cash and all those kinds of things. So what is it? It's a bank led model allowing online interoperable financial inclusion transaction at the point of sale or the micro ATM through the business correspondent of any bank using Aadhaar authentication. So this is a bank led model in which the different financial inclusion ke liye transactions enter karni hoti hai, through the business correspondent wo, uh, Aadhaar authenticated process ke through hoti hai. okay so you just need the bank name the Aadhaar number and the fingerprint which has been taken during the enrollment to do a transaction so isme hum kya kar sakte hain isme Aadhaar authentication ke basis pe aapka account khulta hai okay, and it is and you can obtain the statement of your account the in, you can do the inquiry of the balances aap cash withdraw kar sakte ho cash kahi aur transfer kar sakte ho deposit kar sakte ho through the business correspondent so aadhar yahan pe important hai ki aadhar based authentication hoga so its objective is that it empowers the bank customer to make use of aadhar as his or her identity and uh, using that uh, Aadhaar enabled account is opened and you can perform different banking transactions to that account. It can be cash deposit, withdrawal, transferring the funds, interbank, intrabank, inquiry about the balances, obtain mini statement through the business correspondence. So Aadhaar ke basis pe aapka Aadhaar enabled bank account khulega uh, through business correspondent or uske through aap ye sari type ki transactions kar sakte ho. Moving ahead to these guidelines now. So as per the APS fraud liability guidelines introduced formally from which date from September 1st this year, NPCI has issued new rules for what? For the acquiring as well as the issuing banks to deal with such fraudulent transactions which cause monetary losses to the customers and reimburse them. So in guidelines, mein kya bataya gaya hai? Kuch rules, regulations bataya gaya hai, jo acquiring or issuing banks ko applicable ho gaye, jo, um, jo rules basically fraudulent transactions ke saath deal karenge aur jitne bhi monetary losses hote hain in fraudulent transactions ki wajah se customers ko, unko handle karenge ye guidelines aur us uh, amount ko customers ko reimburse karne pe focus karte hain. 
So here, if I talk about the acquiring bank and the issuing bank, so the bank which is acquired by merchant or where the device has been used is the acquirer bank and the bank with which uh, the customer is holding the deposit, having an account, that's a issuer bank, okay? So, जो आपका merchant को acquire करता है या जहाँ का device use हो रहा है, वो bank आपका acquirer bank है और जहाँ पे user जो है, वो अपनी deposit hold कर रहा है, AEPS के through transactions link कर रहा है, वो bank issuer bank है. So, what was happening that we came up with these guidelines? During the COVID-19 pandemic, there were several cases of fraud that were reported where the direct benefit transfers of the government which were meant for unprivileged uh, beneficiaries were siphoned of using APS. So government ke jo direct benefit transfer hota hai, government ko kisi bhi schemes ke andar jo logo tak unprivileged sections of society tak paise pohachane hai, wo direct account mein transfer hote hai. And usually that is adhar enabled. So kya ho raha tha ki government ne to kisi purpose ke liye us unprivileged beneficiary ke liye amount rakha, wahan transfer kiya, lekin wo paisa wahan na pohach ke fraudulent means ki wajah se kahi aur ja raha tha kahi aur us amount ka use ho raha tha aise kafi fraud ke cases samne aaye isiliye npci ne ye nayi guidelines issue ki hain so the issuing bank needs to notify within 5 days when a customer registers a complaint with an investigation report so agar koi customer complain karta hai ki unhe paise nahi aaye ya wo paisa kahi aur chala gaya koi fraud hua hai so, wherever the customer has a deposit, where AEPS is conducting transactions, the issuing bank will notify within 5 days with an investigation report. And then NPCI will take action. Legi. NPCI, what will it do? It will then give the acquirer bank 10 days to make submission that it was uh, the liability of fraud was not on their end. So, uh, customer complain karega, fir issuing bank ko paanch din ke andar andar investigation report banani hogi. It will uh, basically notify about the same or NPCI fir acquirer bank ko order degi ki within 10 days wo submit kare, uh, submit, wo basically submit kare apna proof ki unke end pe li wo, uh, fraud nahi hua hai. If they are not able to prove that within this 10 days, time period by submitting uh, necessary submission for the same then the acquirer is uh, if the acquirer is unable to do so then the NPCI guidelines say what then they mandate the bank to reimburse the customer within three days so customer ne issuing bank ko bola complain dali issuing bank ne investigation report banai paanch din ke andar andar NPCI fir order kar dega acquirer bank ko ki dust din mein apna Proof submit karo ki aapke end mein wo fraud nahi hua. Agar fir bhi ye acquirer bank submit nahi kar paaya within 10 days ki unke end pe fraud hua hai to unhe 3 din ke andar andar customer ka paisa reimburse karna hoga. The submission of the acquirer bank will also be scrutinized by the issuer bank. So these guidelines are applicable for all types of transactions. Bale hi cash withdrawal ho raha hai, koi deposit ho rahi hai, fund transfer ho raha hai. Ye sab cheezo mein ye guidelines applicable hongi. So these guidelines are applicable to all these financial transactions. Now talking about, uh, now before moving on to next question, let's first discuss the answer to this question. So the correctly related statements we have to identify first is incorrect. It says Ministry of Finance issued these guidelines. No, NPCI. Second is correct, which defines APS. And third is also correct, which says that they are meant to redress the frauds on customers because of, happening because of the loss of data or misuse of data on the APS platform. So first is incorrect, remaining two are correct. That's why answer is option C. Now moving on to question number two and next topic of the day, which says, which regulatory body has issued revised guidelines for trade credit insurance that shall come into effect from 1st November 2021 and improve the economic stability by addressing the trade losses due to payment risks by offering trade credit insurance. So they are talking about the revised guidelines uh, which are related to the trade credit insurance. So which regulatory body has issued these guidelines? See, it's very simple to answer. They are talking about insurance. So which regulatory body deals in insurance? It is IRDAI. So answer to this question is option A. Let's first discuss a bit about this very news piece as well. Then we'll move to next topic and next question. So IRDAI has issued the Trade Credit Insurance Guidelines 2021 revising the existing guidelines. 
and these guidelines will come into effect from 1st November 2021. IRDI stands for Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority. So, this is a regulatory body which basically issues uh, licenses, issue karti hai, insurance reinsurance, ke, regulate karti hai, insurance reinsurance industry. Ko, and uh, it has come up with these guidelines. So, it's, IRDI is the regulatory body which works under the Ministry of Finance jurisdiction and it regulates licenses the insurance and reinsurance industries in India. Now it has issued the guidelines related to trade credit insurance. So let's discuss briefly about trade credit insurance as well and then what these guidelines have to say. So trade credit insurance. Now we might do the business where instead of selling the goods and services on cash basis we provide them on a credit basis. आज हमने गुड सेल किए हम अलाउ कर देते हैं कि फ्यूचर में किसी डेट पे आप पेमेंट कर देना इंस्टेंट कैश पेमेंट ना करो ताकि हमारा ज्यादा से ज्यादा ट्रेड बढ़े क्रेडिट पे जो इमीडिएटली पैसे नहीं दे सकते वो क्रेडिट पे खरीद के गुड्स हमें पैसे बाद में पे कर दें सो गिविंग द गुड्स ऑन क्रेडिट सेलिंग देम ऑन क्रेडिट विल बेसिकली हेल्प एक्सपैंड द बिजनेस बिकॉज़ इट विल केटर टू दोस ऑडियंसेस दोस कस्टमर्स एज़ वेल हु आर नॉट एबल टू पे इमीडिएटली सो इट विल एनहांस आवर ट्रेड but if you are selling the goods on credit basis rather than on immediate cash basis, then there is a risk. What is that risk? The risk is the default of the payment. Jisko aapne udhaar pe, credit pe, uh, goods and services sell kar diye, wo future mein, jis time pe usko payment karni thi, wo future mein wo payment nahi kar paya. That person defaults ya wo insolvent ho gaya. Tab aap kya karoge? Aapka to paise gaye. तो उससे प्रोटेक्शन के लिए आप ट्रेड क्रेडिट इंश्योरेंस ले सकते हो जिसमें क्या होगा कि जितने अमाउंट का आपने बिल बनाया था कि इस पर्सन को मैंने ये गुड सेल किए हैं इन इस पर्सन ने मुझे से 10000 रुपीस की पेमेंट 3 मंथ्स बाद करनी है तो अगर आपने उस पे इंश्योरेंस ले रखी है तो वो पर्सन अगर डिफॉल्ट कर जाता है तो जहां से आपने इंश्योरेंस ली है वहां से आपको प्रोटेक्शन मिल जाएगी यू विल गेट कंपेंसेटेड फ्रॉम देयर so if you have taken an insurance and that person fails to make the payment, say 10,000 was the payment to be made after 3 months and you had taken the insurance and if that person defaults then the insurance company from where you have taken the insurance will compensate you for the same. So trade credit insurance protects the business against the risk of non-payment for the goods and the services. It usually covers a portfolio of buyers and indemnifies an agreed percentage of an invoice that remain unpaid as a result of default or insolvency. Now, it also contributes to the economic growth of a country by facilitating trade, improves the economic stability by addressing trade losses because of payment risks. So, this is the thing which I have just discussed, the entire thing, that if you are selling on a credit basis, your business will explore and if you are not able to get the payment and you have taken an insurance, you will be compensated. So, that payment risk will get addressed, your trade losses will minimize and your trade will maximize. This is what this uh, piece of information has to say. Now, what do these guidelines say? These guidelines say that we will be covering sellers or suppliers of goods and services, factoring corporations, banks and the financial institutions. So all of these institutions can basically get a trade credit insurance to get the protection against different risks. So there might be say suppose there are banks. Uh, suppose you have sold the goods on credit, say you have sold 10,000 worth of goods and you will be receiving payments after 3 months. But today only you immediately need cash. Okay, just one week has passed and there is a need for money. So you go to a bank, you tell the bank to, to basically take this bill. Bank will discount this bill and provide you the cash. Now it's the responsibility of the bank to collect that money from the person to whom the goods were sold on credit. So that person might default and banks might not be able to recover. So there is an option for the banks as well to take this paid, paid credit insurance. All right. So banks and financial institutions, factoring companies, they can use this very insurance to cover the loss on account of non-receipt of payment from the buyer due to commercial risks or the political risks against the bills, invoices purchased or discounted. So commercial risks hai. और कुछ पॉलिटिकल रिस्क्स हैं ट्रेड क्रेडिट इंश्योरेंस ये सब एंटिटीज ले सकती है इनसे प्रोटेक्शन लेने के लिए ये ये गाइडलाइंस कहती हैं सो व्हाट आर व्हाट आर डिफरेंट कमर्शियल एंड पॉलिटिकल रिस्क्स 
Commercial risks include the risk of insolvency, default of the buyer, rejection by the buyer after delivery, or the rejection before shipment, non-receipt of payment on account of or collecting bank's failure. So person just say आपने पैसा लेना था वो insolvent हो गया, वो default कर गया, उसने पैसे देने से मना कर दिया and he rejects paying you before the shipment or after the delivery. तो इन सब cases में आपकी trade trade credit insurance आपको help करेगी. Then it will also help in political risk. So when will the trade credit insurance provide the protection against the political risk? Only in case when the buyers are located outside India. So you have to sell any such buyer to goods sell or services provide that are outside your country, like outside India. Like India ke bahar. So in that case, political risk will also get covered. So if that person is not able to repay you in case there is some kind of a war between the two countries, some hostility, civil war, rebellion, revolution, or there are some disturbances going on between two countries, then that trade credit insurance will compensate you for that very payment loss as well. So this is what these guidelines have to say. And they will apply to all insurer transacting general insurance business registered under Insurance Act. However, there is one exemption that is Export Credit Guarantee Corporation of India is exempted from these guidelines. So, I hope you have guidelines clear that which entities can take skin type ki risk ke liye trade credit insurance ka benefit. Le sakti hai. So, why these guidelines have been introduced? It might be quite clear as uh, uh, as per the discussion we have just had that in a bid to improve the economic stability to address the trade losses due to payment risk, the insurance regulator came up with these revised guidelines. So it will facilitate the insurance companies to help businesses manage country risk open up to new markets. So if political risk is protect ho hai, to aap aur countries mein jaake business karoge. वहाँ के buyers को easily goods credit पे दोगे क्योंकि आपको protection मिल रही है जिस वजह से आपकी growth होगी आप new markets जो है वो explore कर पाओगे so these are few benefits because of which these guidelines have been issued and they will also help to provide the insurance to various small businesses improve on their working like the MSMEs and all okay so this was the entire concept now if I come back to the question we have already answered it IRDI Moving to question number three now, which says retail inflation based on the consumer price index eased to four month low in August due to moderation in food prices along with high base effect. Wholesale inflation rose marginally due to rise in prices of non-food items, mineral oil, crude, petroleum and all and manufactured products. So you have what you have to answer in this very question, you have to identify the inflation rates for the month of August. So if I talk about August, we have seen the CPI falling, it's at the 4 month low and we have seen WPI rising marginally. So what are the new rates which have been released for the month of August? So the answer to this question is option E, ki CPI 5.3% tha is August ke month mein and WPI was 11.39%. So let's discuss very briefly about this. Retail inflation in August eased to 5.3% and it is within the RBI's comfort zone. So RBI ka jo 2 se 6% ka rate chalta hai ki isse kam ya isse zyada inflation nahi jani chahiye is limit ke under hai ye August month ki inflation level and why we have seen a fall? See it is at a 4 month low. Uh, we have seen in the previous month that it exceeded beyond 6%. So last month, I believe, July, mein, it was nearly 6%. Usse pehle 6% se zyada tha. Toh ab ye level kam hua hai. It is good. Okay, so it's at a 4 month low of 5.3% because we have seen moderation in the food prices and the high base effect. Food prices kam hui hai. Jo food inflation hai, wo kam hui hai. Aur wo major contributor hai CPI fall hone ka. Supply side improvements have been there. Then the inflation levels have reduced when we talk about the price of cereals, vegetables, poultry. They have reduced and they have eased the food inflation to 3.11 from 3.96 in the previous month. So 3.96 July mein hamara food inflation jo ab 3.11 hua hai jiski wajay se humne CPI mein overall ye drop dekha hai. And if we compare it with the July 
July me CPI 5.59 by the month of July the CPI was 5.59 and if we compare it with the pre previous year August month pichle saal 2020 August me CPI kafi zyada tha 6.69 tha okay so now it is within the RBI's 2 to 6 percent range talking about WPI it rose marginally in the month of july it was 11.16 okay thoda sa ye bad gaya hai august mein 11.39 hua hai we have seen high levels during the month of may and june then it reduced in july and again it has began to rise in august so why we have seen this rise it's primarily due to rise in prices of non food articles due to rise in price of mineral oils crude petroleum natural gas iske alawa manufactured products ke prices badh gaye hain jo basic metals hain food products hain textiles hain chemicals hain chemical products hain in sab ke prices badhe jiski wajah se ye wpi mein marginal rise hua hai so wpi mein ye rise hua hai iske bawajood hamara cpi fall hua hai thoda sa so this was the inflation level uh data for the month of august we have already answered this question so this was all for today's session with this i would like to end up this session thank you so much